Hello and welcome to the latest edition of the Purple Sofa podcast. Today, hosted by myself, Andy Steele. And I'm Sophie Holmes. So today we're going to be talking about making tax digital for the self-employed and landlords. So Sophie, what is making tax digital? So making tax digital is um, a new system being brought in by HMRC, meaning individuals registered for self-assessment will need to complete a quarterly submission going forward. So at the moment, the tax year runs 6th of April to the 5th of April, and you do an annual tax return. You'll go and do a quarterly submission each year, and then your annual tax return at the end of the year. Making Tax Digital has been around for VAT for some time now. Yes. So some business owners will already be familiar with Making Tax Digital, but this is the sort of the next phase of the rollout, isn't it? Yeah, so any VAT registered business, whether they are compulsory registered or voluntary registered, are complying with Making Tax Digital or should be complying with Making Tax Digital under the rules. So it's the next sort of natural step in quarterly reporting to HMRC. Yeah, so the current Making Tax Digital are having to file quarterly VAT returns using Making Tax Digital compliant software. Yes. This next phase is they're having to basically submit their profit and loss account, aren't they? Yeah, so with the VAT, you submit, you used to be able to log into HMRC and manually type your VAT figures. Now it's submitted via the software, so there's no sort of human input. And um, that's what they're trying to bring in with making tax digital. So all the information will be entered into the software and it will be submitted straight from there. So it's been rolled out from April 26 for landlords and self-employed individuals with income from those two sources combined of above 50k? Yeah, the original limits were going to be a lot lower um, when they looked at introducing this to begin with, but it's been postponed um, partly due to COVID, partly due to other reasons. Um, and then, yeah, they've set a new income limit. And then from April 27, if the combined income from the two sources is above 30k, they will have to comply. And then presumably, everybody else from April 28? I'd like to presume, but we'll, wait, we'll wait for that confirmation, yeah. <laughs> so many landlords and self-employed that aren't VAT registered, many of them are probably already using Making Tax Digital compliant software, but many of them will be using sort of more old-fashioned books and records, you know, spreadsheets, manual records, etc. Yeah. April 26 is still quite a way off and I suspect some people will just be thinking, well, we can leave that for a while. But do you think there's anything this, these businesses should be doing before then to prepare for this? I mean, it would always be a good sense to start the software early so that when it comes to April 26, that first quarter, you're not trying to learn a new software, get your books and records up to date, and complete last year's tax return and worry about these submissions. So reducing a headache in the future by getting on top of that early would be a good idea. Um, also, when it comes to that April and you start, you would need to enter any opening positions into the software. So opening bank balances, opening debtors, opening creditors. So who owes your money, who you owe money to. So you're going to need to get your tax return done pretty quickly after the 5th of April to have that information in. So getting ahead of that now would save that rush 6th of April 26. Yeah. I mean, for me, it would seem logical to start using account software from April 25. So you've got 12 months to mm -hmm. get used to it, um, get your accountant to check what you're inputting into the software so they can flag up anything that you're doing incorrectly. Um, so you've got 12 months sort of practice run yeah. before you start doing it for, for real in April 26. It'll also help businesses keep electronic records. So not having to keep paper copies of receipts as well. 
So that could be something you do in, in conjunction with it and reduce having to have filing cabinets, garages, lofts full of paper receipts for a number of years. I mean, there are, there are well, whilst this might sound like a lot of red tape to some business owners, there's a lot of advantages of keeping your books and records digitally and also using account software because um, it's not only telling you what profit you're making and what you're helping you to establish what your tax liability is. It's sort of, you know, you, you can run off profit and loss accounts, you can run off balance sheets, you can see how the business is performing. And it's much easier to do that with account software than it mm -hmm. is a spreadsheet or a, or a carrier bag full of receipts, isn't it? Well, the softwares are really intelligent. You know, they can link to the bank accounts. They can pull a lot of information from different sources. So it can also save some time overall because you can reduce that sort of manual human input needed. Yeah. And most of the well-known accounting software is making tax digital compliant, isn't it? Yes. The likes of Xero with an X, QuickBooks, Sage, Free Agent, um, to name There's but a lot out four, there, yeah. <laughs> or five. Um, so the next question we get asked a lot is, do you need to register for making tax digital or does it just happen automatically? And the answer to that question <laughs> is, you do need to register, but you do it through the account software. So you have to um, buy the account software and start using it prior to registering for MTD. So you you if you are leaving it till the last minute, you need to get your account software sorted before April 26th so that you can be registered in time. You need to make sure your software's on the right package as well because some softwares, there's different add-ons depending on what you're using it for. So some softwares might offer the basic bookkeeping function, but to do the making tax digital, that might be a package you need to add on as well. Yeah. So there might be some software upgrades that need to be made potentially. Yeah. So you, you've got to file um, your making tax digital information quarterly Yeah. with a, a final... Um, submission after the end of the year um, with any corrections, adjustments, et cetera, and yeah. also any other information that you need in order to finish your tax return. Yes, yeah, so you might have some late invoices um, one quarter, so you would capture those, and then your tax return would capture any other sources of income that you've received or any other deductions you want to claim. Yeah. So it's really important that your bookkeeping is accurate, isn't yeah. it? Because I think if your final submission is significantly different to the first four, HMRC are probably going to ask why, aren't yes. they? Particularly if your profits dropped for some reason. Yeah, and it's also quite... Th there are deadlines for when those submissions have to be in and paid. So if you're it's best not to leave your bookkeep until the last minute because there is a deadline. It isn't just an open-ended thing. You're going to have to be hitting certain submissions. Yeah. So the deadline for quarter one is the 5th of August, quarter two, 5th of November, and so on. Um, so on the 5th of August, as an example, you don't want to be rushing, trying to get everything updated into a system for that submission. Yeah. You want to be working on it over that quarter so that you're just doing... Well, in the run-up to that, you're doing some final checks. Yeah. Um, we're often asked if we think income tax is ultimately going to be paid or paid quarterly going forwards rather than six monthly. And there's there's no plans for that at the moment, but I don't think it's exogenous to work out that at some point they're going to start talking about paying your tax quarterly because um, it helps the countries and the Treasury's cash flow, doesn't it? If they're getting tax quarterly rather than six monthly, um, it would reduce bad debts. I suppose for individuals, it makes it easier for budgeting purposes as well because yeah. you're not having to make either one big payment in January or two payments throughout the year, depending on the liability. Yeah. You can sort of spread that throughout the year. So it's not on the agenda currently, but I wouldn't be surprised if ultimately we're paying income tax quarterly like we do a VAT. Mm -hmm. So how can 360 help businesses that are starting to think about 
making tax digital, think about April 26 or maybe early adoption of accounting software in April 25? So we can help with getting software set up, getting people trained on the softwares. Choosing the right software. I'm going to sneeze. I'm really sorry. Feel free to sneeze. <laughs> so we, yeah, so picking which software, making sure it's functional for making tax digital, we've got any opening balances in. If you're wanting to outsource the bookkeeping completely, we can assist with that and put things in place to make it as quick and seamless as possible. If you're wanting to do the bookkeeping yourself, train people up on those softwares so that they're doing it as correctly as they can. Um, also educating the clients on what, what making tax digital is and what their responsibilities and what they need to be complying with. Yeah, we have clients who prepare their own VAT returns through the accounting software and we just check that information mm -hmm. before it's filed, isn't it? Yeah. Either by the client or by us. Um, so we'll be able to do the same thing with making tax digital, won't we? Yeah, there'll be some individuals that are comfortable with what's required of them, what they need to do um, and what they're looking for, but some clients will want that assistance as well. So there's a lot more information about making tax digital on our blog, which is 360accountants.co.uk forward slash blog. Or if you do have any other questions, please contact us on help at 360accountants.co.uk or ask a question on one of our social media outlets. We're on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter stroke, X. So you should be able to find us, no problem. Thank you. Thank you.